I'm some kind of the, uh, the crazy guy. With me now is Ted Price, the man who started Insomniac Games. We know you from uh, Ratchet and Clank, Resistance, and this fall, Resistance 2. That's right. So this game, uh, you know, we've heard a little bit about it already. It, it sounds truly epic. I mean, you got 60-player multiplayer. Yep. Is, is that almost, is that too many people? That's a good question. Uh, one of the challenges with so many players is making sure that you know what you're doing right. and it isn't devolving into chaos. Right. So we're putting in some really cool features to make sure that when you get into a 60-player game, you know what you're supposed to do, you know what your objectives are, and those objectives are continually to change. So it won't feel like you're just overwhelmed by too many people out there. So how, what is the limit? We're going to see... 120 players in Resistance 3? I mean, how, how big are these games going to get? That's a good question. I think it really depends on how well developers design squad mechanics and objectives. Right. It really now, comes down to that. Now, Resistance 2, uh, we know Nathan Hale is back. I mean, this is, you know, his story. Uh, but we, it sounds like there are going to be two campaigns in this game, and we're going to see sort of a co-op campaign and a single-player campaign? Right. The single-player campaign follows Nathan Hale through America as he is fighting off the a, a Chimera invasion that actually is airborne this time. And it starts where? In, in Iceland or something like that, It starts right? in Iceland, that's right. That's actually where the game opens. And it, it actually literally starts with the op a closing cinematic from Resistance 1. So there's right. continuity between the two games. Okay. And takes you through a lot of different locations Still in the Still got United that States. same narration for the storytelling? Because that was one thing I didn't love in Resistance 1. Well, you know, you're not the only one. We heard okay. a lot of, a lot of c criticisms about how we removed the player from the game by right. using narrative, narration. Right. So now that the story is staying focused completely on Hale, you're seeing everything from his perspective. So you'll, you'll identify so a lot better. So sort of like Half-Life, all kind of in-game and seeing what happens around him? There or? is a lot of in-game storytelling, much right. more so than Resistance 1. And that allows us to, I think, tell the story in a more kind of visceral way. Right. Now, what are you doing for like the animation stuff? Are you like mocapping people, or how are you kind of figuring out like what's happening, you know, for the animation? We've we've moved to mocap in a right. big way on Resistance too, mostly because it allows us to do more uh, in terms of getting animation done and creates more believable animations for our human characters. Right. So, but how are you how are you capturing those uh, chimeras? Well. We do a lot of hand animation as well. And right. because we have so many different types of enemies in the game, and they're not humanoid, all humanoid by any means, we, are, we have a very talented crew of animators who are constantly trying out new things. Right. I mean, we have some absolutely massive characters who wouldn't look right Huge boss being, fights in this one, being right? mocap. That's correct. Huge boss fights we're expecting. Now, Resistance, you know, it sounds like Resistance 2 is going to have so much in it. I mean, you look at like Halo 3 and how much they had with Forge and online. Resistance to 60-player multiplayer, two campaigns. Like, are these games getting too ambitious and too big? I mean, because everyone's trying to top each other with features? Well, I think that's, that's definitely a danger. I mean, right. it's easy to fall into that trap of trying to one-up everybody. But we felt that, for example, with eight-player online co-op, we had an opportunity to do something that was different, right. that felt fresh for players. Because you know, a, lot, a lot of people complained that we didn't have online co-op in Resistance, and so we wanted to rectify that. Right. But at the same time, online co-op has been done the same way in other games. And we figured, okay, let's change the rules. Let's give multiple classes in online co-op. Let's create eight players right. in online co-op, or eight, support eight players. And also, let's create a separate story for online co-op. It's a totally so different it, story? It is a, it's a story that parallels Hales. Now, it's right. story light. Don't expect the same sort of crazy uh, cinematics Cinematic, from yeah. a single-player campaign, but it is telling a story as sense. you're moving through. That's right. So you identify with the, the characters that you're playing. Wow. So, I mean, this is coming out this fall, we think, right? Correct. And there's another big PlayStation 3 first-person shooter people are talking about, Killzone. Right. You guys going to be going head-to-head -head here? The battle of the two PlayStation 3 exclusives? Well, I mean, if we do... They offer something that's completely different. I mean, the stories are different. Right. I think the gameplay that we've seen is very different. So it's going to be a you good... You going to make the better game, though, Ted? I haven't seen Killzone 2, so other than... We saw it at E3 last year. Right. And hey, it, looked really, it looked beautiful. I got to say, those guys know what they're doing. A lot of competition, right? Yeah, but competition's good. I think for both teams, we both feel Motivates inspired. everyone? Yeah. yeah. And, you got, and you got those Resistance 1 fans. I mean, what, more than 2 million, I think, around the world now? Yep, over 2 million. That's amazing. Well, I think we I think it's two and a half million at this point. Two and a half million resistance fans and then Ratchet and Clank, which did great last year. Yep. Very successful. We'll see another Ratchet, I assume, you know, not this year, but maybe next year. That's a great question. Never know? You never know. But you've done Ratchets for so many years. You're not gonna <laughs> leave it behind now, are you? Yeah, we love Ratchet. Love Ratchet. Yeah. And what about uh, doing some stuff for PlayStation Network? I mean, there were some rumors that you might do some, you know, smaller PSN games from Insomniac. Haven't heard anything in a long time. Is that still active that you're going to make those? You may see some from us. 
the near future? We haven't announced anything yet. Right. We have been. I mean, what we did, we had map packs that came out for Resistance, which are downloadable right. from the from PSN, and that's been great to have that out there. It really helped us understand how to make smaller, kind of bite-sized right. uh, games. What about a standalone arcade game of looking at you know some of the Ratchet characters, you know Captain Quark or something, and having his own little you know adventure or something? Never say never. I mean, we're good at doing mini games, so it's a possibility. See some mini games from Insomniac. Always many secrets happening inside of the walls of Insomniac, but obviously Resistance 2 will be the big game for you guys this year, right? That's right. right. Cool. Well, hopefully we'll uh, look forward to seeing more of it soon, see it in action footage, and uh, we'll be playing it this fall. All right. Cool. Thank Thanks, you. Dad. Appreciate it.